presenting um, an R package I've been developing over the last two or three years, working with the sarcoma group. Uh, definitely heavily inspired by existing REDCap uh, API packages. I know some have been presented at this conference. I'm looking forward to, um, uh, well, I'm on night shift right now, but I'm looking forward to watching uh, some of the presentations, especially the uh, Tidy R, uh, um, REDCap Tidy R that was presented here. Um, I also use as one part of this package, does use the another REDCap uh, API package in addition to my own function. So um, the first part of my presentation, I'm just gonna show you kind of some framework things that some of you will be familiar with. Um, so I may be preaching to the choir for some things. And I wanted to preface by saying, you know, I'm writing this by myself. Um, so, so the documentation, in order to get ready for this presentation, uh, the documentation on the package still needs to be updated. This isn't like a, a CRAN ready package at the moment. Uh, I plan on submitting it if I can demonstrate that there's something novel about it, which is why I wanted to present to this group. Um, and then I still need to update some of my vignettes and make a book down and those kind of things. Uh, but there, it is a functioning package that I use um, daily on multiple REDCap packages. Um, ultimately, if you guys could just follow the GitHub or email me. Um, I also have a website, uh, thecodingdocs.com. Um, so I'll try and keep information on what I'm working on uh, there. And then just a quick um, intro about me. I'm a resident at University of Miami um, working on sarcoma research. Um, I actually learned R first in 2018, working with Ray Belize, who's here. Um, so lots of appreciation there. And I've also worked at the NIH where I was coding and uh, very committed to R, um, even after learning um, higher or different tools that I use for uh, my job with the admissions committee at UM. Um, this is just a demonstration of how I got started. I ended up, I always was interested in making the visuals for people and uh, knowing how the bread was made kind of thing, the data behind all of these cool graphics and that led to more and more interest in the behind the scenes, the coding. Um, I'll skip forward. This is just a quick overview. Like I said, I was going to fly through this so that we could get to the demonstration. I'm also going to keep the chat up. If you guys have questions, uh, please uh, hit the chat. I will try and keep an eye. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to skip over things. I'm just going to highlight why REDCap is so interesting and why APIs are so important. Uh, if you guys, um, there might be a lot of physicians here um, or just people that work with physicians and research. I work with people, none of them know what an API is. Um, I'm lucky if they know what REDCap is, yet um, they're both vital to EMRs and research. So uh, like I said, probably preaching to the choir here, but um, getting your colleagues and other people educated about these things and showing them the power behind it is a big motivator of why I made this package. And these are just some examples. Um, this is what I mean when I'm trying to explain to people that are not familiar with R. I want them to know what they may not need to use these things themselves, but they should really know, um, you know, what the right tool for a certain job is. And unfortunately, in clinical research, a lot of people are still using just Excel sheets, uh, even very productive um, research groups are kind of still in the Excel world. So I've been trying to teach what's at the bottom of this um, slide, a, a model view controller framework, where I tell people your model is the database or the data or whatever, the Excel sheet in some people's case, the view is kind of the fun stuff you want to get out of it. And the controller is kind of what goes behind the scenes. Unfortunately, a lot of people use Excel for all three of these things. Um, as most of you know, um, using R for um, at least two out of three of these things is how I, what my framework is. Um, I'll skip over some slides, but I did want to highlight transactional data versus analytical data. This is things I've learned uh, working with more of the business side, um, like working with the admissions committee. And so transactional data is kind of what you guys would imagine in a SQL database. It's um, online transactional processing. Um, in an EMR, you know, 
it's the relational aspect of the EMR where every row is someone's labs um, and there's multiple related tables. That's kind of a transactional database. And then an analytical database is what most people um, you know, want their end product Excel sheet to look like. It's very denormalized. Um, so people that code use things like ETL processes um, to transform data and other people will manually import or manually collect data in an analytical format. So I've been trying to, um, you know, educate people about these things. So um, I already talked about model view controller. I'm just going to skip over um, some of the hemo the oncology related things, but I will highlight um, having worked on a lot of projects that do chart review, um, just learning to highlight people for what their strengths are and using the right tools. So REDCap um, is great. Um, it has some limitations in the data structure, but other than that, I think it's a very powerful thing. Um, and it's really not an analytical tool in its current format. So I use R for a lot of that. And you could also use Python or whatever. Um, and this is just me highlighting kind of some model view controller and some common softwares. Um, so I did want to point out kind of how I use R. Um, we in the in a in this context, it would be with the sarcoma research group. Um, so we have our investigators, our PIs. Uh, they're kind of in control of coming up with ideas. And then uh, right now, I got them to commit to this using Redcap uh, at least for controlled data collection. And then I use R and another application that's private, uh, a shiny app. Um, to do a lot of uh, higher level things and um, explore the data, those kind of things. And ultimately, we export these things into OneDrive, and then it's a circle. So as we, as people update the red cap, as we uh, do quality control on the data, we export to the OneDrive. People can view the exports of the Excel, and they can, uh, we can either make mass edits in Excel and upload it back to red cap using the, the package that we have. Um, or we can just see where the holes in the data are. Uh, this also allows us to import things from uh, Epic reports. Eventually, we'd like to a data mart where we can do an ETL from this data mart uh, to REDCap. So um, those are kind of next steps for us. Um, most of you probably already know REDCap, um, but this is just a summary slide of kind of the data structure behind uh, REDCap. And the most powerful thing is probably the API. Most people that use REDCap, uh, or the majority of users that use REDCap probably don't use the API, um, which is, and they actually don't even use the built-in import tools. For example, making a project, if you have um, 300 variables, you know, making 300 manual REDCap variables is insane. If you didn't know about the, um, you know, where you can export the metadata in an Excel sheet, edit it there, and then send it back to REDCap. So a lot of it's just explaining to people how to use REDCap correctly. Um, this, I, I already spoke about this. This is on my website. It's more about um, not using, um, I don't want to offend anyone here if you use SPSS, um, but this is a little bit of an offensive slide if you use SPSS SAS data. There's nothing wrong with these things. I would just argue the time spent learning those things um, could be spent learning something that's a little more of a open tool. Um, so I do explain people, uh, explain to people, you know, using the right tools. If you're going to spend five years doing research on something, um, you know, if you're going to do a one-time project and you you know how to use SPSS and you know how to use SAS and you have a pipeline and you're used to using it, uh, I definitely think you should use it. But for people that are starting fresh, um, you know, I definitely recommend, um, yeah, I know I'm gonna, I might offend some people here, but it's just to get, it's uh, just to um, get the, um, I would say, get the information out there. Um, not that much hate for SAS, but I see, I sorry for uh, Joel. Um, this is just describing some uh, paid statistical software. I'm going to get to my demo soon. I'm just going to end with um, a description of kind of how, what the actual REDCap package is, what it does, 
and then um, open it up to questions while I'm pulling up the demo part of the um, presentation. So uh, this kind of summarizes a lot of what I've been talking about. Most people in the top left are gonna be using some combination of um, Excel to do some of these um, analytical things where I'm trying to get people to use REDCap for the model um, and then you know more exciting like R and uh, Python and uh, shiny apps uh, for the other things. Um, this allows us to use um, multiple data sources um, from data brokers to old projects uh, to ultimately get the data where it belongs in a single um, standardized shape like REDCap. And then uh, in my case with the R package I made, I have a standard R object, uh, list object that can be a um, basis object for like a shiny app that can be plugged in if you have a different token and a different red cap package. Um, I mean, a different R uh, red cap project. Um, you know, you could just put in another token and run the same script and you'd get a the same shiny app with different inputs. So um, this is just me building on this model view controller framework. So REDCap is a great model. It has all the logging. It's great for that uh, transactional processing I was telling you about. And then um, the R package that I have or any combination of REDCap packages you have that might use the API to get data out of REDCap. Uh, and then I use um, Shiny apps for kind of viewing the data, or you could also use Arc Down or just Excel sheets that are exported. Um, uh, this is just me. This is my last second to last slide here. This is just showing an example of what I was able to do with this REDCap package, um, getting the metadata out of REDCap and using those variables um, in an R Shiny app where you can change. Um, you, uh, you can use the metadata. So you pick out if you have 300 variables, 150 of them are choices. Um, then on the left, you can click through those choices and make survival curves in this case, um, timelines. These are all uh, HTML widgets. Um, as, and obviously the survival serve minor package. Um, and on the right, it's just showing, uh, I've sim since uh, simplified this to make a multi-tab Excel. Um, but before I was uh, exporting everything as um, uh, by the red cap form. All right, and this is just a shout out to the sarcoma group. Uh, I'm gonna leave this open for questions for at least the next two or three minutes uh, while I pull up uh, the demo. I'm gonna keep a look and eye on the chat. Does anyone wanna ask a question um, over? the voice while I'm looking at the chat. Oh, there's a lot of chat here going. So I might have to read that um, on the side. I'm pulling up a demonstration now. All right. Um, if you guys have your own um, R packages, I mean, uh, REDCap API tokens, um, you could run this on your own. Um, I'll say that uh, I did have a working version for longitudinal REDCap projects, meaning ones that have event one, event two. Um, but in my preparation for uh, getting ready for this talk and changing, changing some of the code, I broke the longitudinal aspect, so I modified the red cap, um, but I'll fix that in a, a future update. Um, are you guys able to see my screen? I don't think I'm sharing. Or, oh no, I am sharing. You're able to see the this red cap project? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
So um, one thing I do when I work with others and I have them that like, for example, the medical students doing the red cap um, data input, I have them use the record status dashboard and this red, yellow, green system. And I have them go through um, the chart collection. I pre-populate um, things like uh, from the EMR. So if I have a thousand MRNs, they're gonna already have the ethnicity and the race and the gender etc um and i use you know uh i try and make it as simple as possible but ultimately you have to have a human kind of review some of these charts just to reconcile some of the issues with the notes um so for the standard user they're using red cap um but almost everything else is r uh, most of you guys probably know about the api i'm comfortable sharing this token which is why it's i'll ch change it later um you guys are also welcome to use this token i'll put it in the chat um, if you don't have your own red cap project and you do have your computer up, um, obviously you guys know, never share your red cap, uh, API tokens, their username and a password, um, for whatever data you're working on. Uh, in this case, uh, I hope I don't get, um, blocked from, uh, red cap doing this, but, um, let's see if, uh, Ray Belize, if, uh, am I going to get kicked off of my, uh, <laughs> red cap uh, but this is a test project you guys could use um, if not use your own um, but let me just demonstrate kind of how I pipeline my projects um, there's a readme uh, in the chat but uh, like I said this isn't CRAN so I use the remotes package to install um, I use the um, let me delete some things so that it's um, back in its old with nothing in here. So I'll delete some files. Okay. So uh, essentially, let's say you have a blank project and you just have a script and you were going to use this project. Um, you would install the package, um, load the um, functions, and there's really only four or five main functions that I would put in the core category of what's important to the package. Um, and then I have a lot of other ones that I need to document more um, that allow you to do things like quality control. Um, so I'll show some screenshots for that. Um, but essentially what's unique about this package, I think, um, correct, correct me if you guys have heard of other packages that do this, but I already had, uh, in this case, it downloaded everything from RedCap for this project, and it created all of these folders uh, that I used in the project. Um, but I think what's unique about this is if I make a change in RedCap, let's say I have a very large RedCap and multiple people working on it, and I make you know one modification um, on RedCap, and I save it, can add, maybe add, market as complete. Um, so what this does, <clears throat> when I run, whenever I run the update database packet uh, function, it's gonna use the API to, it's gonna use the existing database object that already exists. Um, in this case, it's in the R objects folder. That's um, not a large project, so it's not a large file. Um, it's going to load the database object that you already have. It's going to use the API call to RedCap to check the log, and it's going to reconcile the last time you made a call, um, and it's only going to update the record that's been modified. So when I run this again, um, it'll check the log, and it'll tell you that it updated person 19. So it made a call to the log, um, and then it only made a call to go get all of the information for um, person 119, and it um, updated that record within the object, and I'll show you the structure of the object soon. Um, one important thing with REDCap I like to do is merge things that can be merged, and then, um, so if you have a lot of non-repeating instruments, um, I merge all of those into one thing. Um, so let me just show you the structure. When you uh, take a look at this list object, 
Um, the most important things are data extract. If you got, this is probably similar to um, other, um, the other REDCap um, packages where the data is going to be by form inside an R, you know, data frame, uh, nothing unique there, but the um, transform function um, essentially uses the red cap metadata, um, which is found, um, you know, like what the clean name in red cap is um, and, you know, what the choices are, like the, um, and it, not just the raw names of everything. Um, and then I'll show you, there's a summarize function and essentially I can drop all of this into um, my environment so I can show you the actual outputs. Um, So um, I'm trying to find what I wanted to show. Um, I might have to clear my environment because it's getting messy. Um, how much time do I have? I'm doing good on time. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a pause to before I explain kind of the second half of what this package does where I um, drop all the Excel sheets into the, um, into a, 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 a standardized directory that can also be edited in Excel. Um, I wanted to open it up if anyone had any um, verbal questions. I, I think I'm overloaded with the amount of chat info. All right, so I'll show you some of the outputs that come into the folder uh, after you run the drop directory function. Uh, whenever you run this, um, as long as you have Excel downloaded um, on your computer, you're going to get um, this export file that has um, hyperlinks to the actual red cap. So I'll pick on person one, um, uh, 119 again. If I click on this, it'll bring me to the actual um, red cap. Um, the link might be broken because of my package. Uh, oh, no, it's working. There we go. Um, so when you click on the link, it actually brings you to the, the study ID. So as long as you're signed into red cap, um, you know, if someone was doing chart review and they noticed that uh, a bunch of people were missing data, um, you know, you have the red cap reporting option, but if you guys have, uh, if you guys have ever worked with, um, the red cap reports, if you have repeating forms, um, and you have other things that can, it can be a little messy. Um, and to my knowledge, there's not a great way around this in, um, red cap at the moment, but I'm hoping to see other ways of viewing things within red cap but right now i i do all the um i prefer to see all of my data outside of red cap like um using the api just because for people that are actually doing the chart review day to day um how can you look at this and see what data in the treatment is missing if they were all red yellow green so really you can use reports but um this is another way because uh, in that transform function that I mentioned, I also I may merge repeating forms or I may merge non-repeating forms to a repeating form with my um, transform function uh, using things similar ideas to like using um, you know tidyverse to merge some things join um, so I do things like that for my project and then the Excel exports have one form um, merged with another. So you can see, I can't show you my actual research data. So, uh, and I didn't have time to make a good example other than this one, um, but it creates a multi-tab Excel sheet that's gonna have um, a tab for each form that's in the red cap, as well as um, summary data. So I was gonna show you 
um, what some of the summary data is. Um, so far, any questions? I might have to demand, there's 70 people, I gotta demand at least one question. All right. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys the, um, because I use the summary function to also make subsets. So if you have a thousand people in a red cap and you wanted to use, uh, you wanted to just export a subgroup of those. So we have sarcoma. So if I wanted to export just all of the people with angiosarcoma, I everything stays in that data extract portion of the R object. And then I run a function um, with summarize and I only summarize a subset. And that puts those people in the data transform section and it runs the summary on those people. Um, so that when I actually look at something like the code book, um, in this example, I use uh, skimmer uh, just to add some data. This, these, this normally gets exported to the Excel sheet. Um, so if you're working on using this package and you're working on, um, like sharing the data frequently with people and you want to include, um, you know, like a subset, like I said, angiosarcoma, and you wanted to include um, for every single variable in the red cap, uh, some sort of summary, um, basically taking the code book and addending it with some extra columns saying, um, these are the number of people with uh, this choice. And, you know, you can do whatever you want with the percent, but this is built into the package. So, um, if you're someone that has a red cap already and you ran, um, kind of these core, um, functions and you drop, uh, the information into the directory, this is the stuff you get out. Um, and I think I have this list viewer thing to show you more of the structure. Um, and then I'll show you some screenshots from the shiny app and how I use it. Um, but these are the areas of the red cap list object. I have some internal things that I track, like when's the last time I updated the metadata? When's the last time I checked the log? Um, you know, if I was gonna merge everything, uh, what would I call it? Um, so that's the patient thing. So, th so these things are arguments in the setup um, and they run the internal part of, and I'm still modifying a lot of these things to, uh, see how I can optimize the package. Um, and then everything that's uh, native to red cap is in this red cap section of the list with the metadata, the instruments, uh, what are the reference columns? Um, you know, are there any events, all that stuff. So you guys are probably familiar with, right? I'm sure other red cap packages have addressed, um, you know, nailing down some of these things when you have an R project. And then I also keep, a copy of the log, um, a copy of all the users. Um, oh, I've got another feature that's really interesting. I'm gonna see if I can pull up an Excel sheet that's, I guess is recorded. I don't wanna accidentally share any patient information, but um, in, in our Excel sheet outputs, uh, we also have, um, when you export, it shows which user, how many records a user has interacted with according to the log. Um, so it, imagine this Excel sheet here um, that I was showing the, this one. Imagine this Excel sheet with a tab uh, where the rows are all the users and there's a column in there that says, um, you know, this person has had uh, interacted or modified data on 45 charts, this person did five. Um, and that's just automatic using the log. So as long as you don't have an absolutely massive red cap, you could download the entire log for the entire project. Um, otherwise, you can set the package to only look back 10 days or things like that. So, um, but that is a feature I plan on documenting better, but it is part of the package already. Um, and then um, I have this whole section on quality checks that I have to write a vignette for, but because I have this data uh, database object that has everything kind of as a list object, you can also write your own function that 
has an output object that is the database function, and you can add that function as an object to this quality check. And then you can run a function that just says run quality checks. And if, for example, you're using one, if there's two variables in REDCap that need to be derived from another, even though I recommend against doing that, in a lot of projects you might have things where somebody puts, or maybe let's say you wanted to summarize inside the red cap, how many uh, treatments someone had based on how many instances um, you could have, you could have this quality check function that um, updates uh, internally in the red cap. Um, I forgot to, I mean, another major thing that was the, I think some of the novelty of this package um, was actually updating the data um, either internally from R or from Excel. I don't think I'm going to be able to show a good example of that uh, without um, showing any patient data. So I'm working on a practice data set um, that shows. But basically, um, if you modify this Excel sheet that I was showing, and you changed a whole bunch of data um, and you moved it to the upload folder, uh, or if you just modified it inside R and then um, put it in this section that says data upload, um, uh, you can take, it'll compare what's in data upload to what's in data extract. Um, and whatever is new or uh, modified, uh, you can have it set in the package so that it either tells you, um, you know, which things are, you're about to update, or you can be bold and, and uh, not use the console. So I'll show some screenshots of what I mean. Um, and I think I, I still have time, right? I still have, uh, oh, how much time do I have left? Yeah, you still have 20 minutes. Okay, cool. All right, so I have time to kind of slow down um, and answer questions and kind of show you um, some of the other things, the other features of it. So I'm going to pull up some screenshots um, if anyone has questions so far. Um, here's an example of... Um, I, the, I'm blanking on the name of the, um, does anyone recognize this, uh, our package? I'll think about it in a second. Um, make ta table one, table one. Okay. Um, so like I was saying, you can use um, table one or other outputs and kind of point to this red cap uh, R object and uh, essentially, if you have 10 folders that are all subsets, um, let's see, open question, does REDCap have version control? Um, what do you, do you mean does REDCap, uh, REDCap has an API version and they also have a, um, they also have like a, if you go to the URL of any REDCap project, it does have a version. Sorry, I'm going to show some more screenshots here. Um, here's another example of some of the outputs that I've been using. Um, I'm really interested in the HTML objects. Uh, this one is from, um, it's another HTML widget. If you guys ever, um, if you're ever bored and you go to, um, this H HTML widget gallery. Um, I think it's a really cool place to, um, to go, uh, looking for cool visuals. So I think I used, uh, this one network D3. So as I said before, this points to the red cap. So you could write a function that makes this from the data, uh, database object, uh, or whatever subset, you know, if you made a subset and you just wanted to look at that and you had a function where one of the arguments was this database object. Um, you know, you could run something that uses the uh, red cap labels. I forgot to code uh, this part at the top with the correct variable name. 
Um, but just kind of more examples of, of using uh, different pipelines. Let's see what else I have. I'm thirsty for questions that aren't in the chat because Are you guys a shy group? There's a lot going on in chat. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll also say this is um, what I was saying about having a, maybe a data quality element um, where I have people that are doing chart review and I have them um, go through like all the dates for, uh, and I have code that checks if the dates are correct. I know REDCap lets you um, force a date, but I don't think there's a great partial date option for REDCap uh, as an option. So if you want to use the CDISC um, standard where you uh, you either have a month uh, or a date, I mean a year that's partial or a year month that's partial or the full date, year, month, day, um, if you don't have that, uh, I pretty much have to use free text and I use, um, you know, R code to double check all the dates. And if it identifies a date that's in the wrong format, I can use the R console to click through um, and just modify um, within, um, within the actual package. So I just wanted to highlight, um, like in this database object, the token name is actually stored um, I'm, uh, I don't know if most of you know, one way to use a token is to say like, here is my token. And, you know, you can use that inside a script, uh, but you don't always want to have that inside your script. You kind of want it in your, um, you can use the use this. Um, I'm definitely not going to hit run. You'll see all my uh, tokens. Um, but if you use this edit our environment, you can put your tokens there and that kind of keeps it out of scripts and it keeps it inside. Um, so this package it kind of uses something like that. Um, so if you guys didn't have, uh, like if you don't want your token showing up um, inside your script, uh, you either set it like this, like set your system environment. Um, you can do this in your console instead of a script where you one time just Put it in the environment but if you don't put it in that script i told you about you have to kind of run that every time um but something else you can do is if this package doesn't recognize the token or if the token doesn't uh, work it'll prompt you in the console to put in a valid token it'll save it in your environment temporarily um so that's another uh another thing that it does So let's say today is June 12th. I'm hoping uh, I'm on a very busy rotation now. Um, and I've been working like nonstop since April and now I'm on nights. Um, but I'm hoping to have um, more thorough documentation um, on the GitHub and um, hopefully people can test it with REDCap packages they already have. I've already tested it on uh, multiple project types. I still have to verify that everything works in Windows. Um, but just to summarize before I open it up for questions, the ROSI REDCap package is meant to be um, a package that takes everything that we could possibly get out of REDCap, bring it into R, um, get updates if you have a really big project and you only need updates on things that have changed since you last ran the function it's only going to get that um and then you don't have to use the directory function where you drop files out of it but that's one way to use it uh, the other way is to just keep everything in that database object um and use r scripts um and 
Uh, as I mentioned before, you can modify the data either in Excel or the R object, and you can upload it back to REDCap. Um, something I'm really excited about, ho hoping to have a working toy version in the next two or three months is a uh, using a go the Golem package um, inside of this Rosy Redcap to um, have a function like Run App, where uh, you can modify anything that's in. Um, right now, I have just the placeholder for the Shiny app, um, and I have a working version for the Sarcoma group. But I'm working on making that code agnostic to a Redcap project. And the goal would be to have a Shiny app that's referencing this database object, updating it if you click the update button, um, and then modifying the data. So if you had one record and they had five treatments and five surgery forms and one demographic form, you would see all of that on the left. Um, and if you wanted to modify things inside there, like, <clears throat> if you wanted to change, I actually have it set up so that um, for those of you that use Shiny apps, you know, you can have the multiple choice, you can have text. Um, so I already have a Shiny app where it knows if this is a red cap multiple choice, it'll load um, that record's choice. And if you change it, it'll use the API and send it back to red cap. So it's kind of like a layer on top of or a, a user interface workaround for REDCap is kind of how I see phase two of this Rosie REDCap package. Um, and I might even separate it into two separate packages. Um, so just to summarize again, the model view controller framework, um, I think REDCap is a great model. I think it's gonna keep being used um, in clinical research for a long time. Uh, so it's worth getting to know. And then as a controller, I think we would all agree that R is pretty great. Um, and as a viewer, I think um, Shiny um, and other, you know, myriad of R um, packages are also great for viewing data, making data pipelines. Um, so if you guys email me or if you follow the GitHub, um, just know I, I plan on when I have more free time, um, documenting the status of this project. And I'm also willing to collaborate with other people that make REDCap packages and see how we can um, you know, use REDCap to its biggest abilities. Um, I will open it up. Um, I think I have 10 more minutes for, for questions. I would love to be able to use R inside REDCap. I mean, essentially, I'm taking all the data out of REDCap, using it for its log and its data structure and its control. Um, but then I'm doing all the juicy stuff inside R. So it would be nice if um, if there was a plugin uh, inside REDCap and you could write functions. But um, I'm totally happy with uh, REDCap being what it is and then uh, designing software around it. You can use the embedded frames to show Shiny. What do you mean by that, Chris? Has anyone, I'm stuck to, I've been trying to use that. I would love to be able to use Red Cap inside of a um, iframe inside of a shiny app, um, but it's not allowed. It's blocked by our servers for me. Um, but yeah, I, I frequently, um, it would be nice to um, have something like that, but instead I just, uh, I'm working on this shiny app that you can change the data. I, I think some of the limitations of red cap is for people that want to do bulk editing of things and they don't want to do it inside red cap. Um, you know, like if you go to reports, uh, it would be great if there was a God mode where you could modify the data here and maybe make that a user right um, where only trusted people can do that. Um, but I think a lot of this workaround has to do with, uh, man, I wish I could 
modify this and this and this. And that, that's why people use um, Excel sheets instead of red cap as they really want to be able to uh, modify things in bulk, but obviously that comes at a, a risk of um, the whole point of red cap is your, and, and the same reason why in a medical record, when you're in someone's record, you know, you're, it's meant to kind of not be able to go all over the place or modify everything all at once. But for the people that do the analysis and quality control, um, I've just found these, um, the built-in tools in REDCap to be limited or not letting me do what I, I want to do that I know I can do in R. I'm going to try and read some. Does this package validate SSL certificate? Um, I believe so. I use the um, REDCap R package for when I get absolutely everything from, but at times I use the red cap R package, um, but I'll go to my actual, um, <clears throat> when I make the calls, I use H the HTTR package and whatever the defaults are. Um, I'd have to educate myself if it's validating, but I believe that's the default of HTTR, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Yeah, so I, I think for, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. So for my like update everything, I use the red cap R package uh, because they have a really good um, like get everything function. But uh, there's things like getting files and um, things like that, that I use uh, my own. Uh, and also things change too. So you can go to the API playground and um, start writing functions that use um, use these kind of another use case I'd use this package for is um, dumping all the file like if uh, if there's PDFs that need to be uploaded for a hundred people um, you know I use the I use this package uh, for a firefighter group um, and I upload all the PDFs using uh, this file system and this red cap thing red cap R package. <laughs> for collaborators who do not know how to use R with your package, uh, you can modify data from Excel only. Um, so <clears throat> let's see, for people who do not know how to use R, if you don't know how to use R and you were going to use this package, uh, the only thing you would have to learn is maybe how to run, um, you know, a very small amount of code. Uh, one reason why I wanted to build a shiny app on top uh, I really like how shiny apps can be run locally. Um, so if you have, you know, sensitive data that you only want um, on your institution's OneDrive, it'll it'll be on your computer when you do the API call. It'll be in your environment, but you can set up your OneDrive so that you're only saving files to OneDrive. You can either modify the data inside Excel, um, and uh, so one of the reasons I came up with this idea of modifying the Excel is because REDCap already has a data import tool, um, but it restricts you to only using um, the coded data set. I'm really against using coded data sets if, they, if you have human beings that are doing the chart review. You don't want them using 0, 1, 3, um, so one of the reasons I have the Excel outputs as I have them, and you would edit it here uh, instead of using the red cap, um, instead of using the native red cap tool is so that you could uh, see the data as it is without the ones and twos um, and upload that, that back to red cap. Uh, so it's kind of a workaround for red cap, not accepting um, these as options. These was normally would have to look like this for REDCap to uh, use the data import tool. Um, <clears throat> so just to answer Eva's question, um, in its current state, it would you could run 10 lines of code, drop a bunch of Excel sheets, modify it, um, and you would move that file over into the upload folder. And then you would run another function that's like, um, you know, get, get file from upload folder. I, I forget the name of the function. I'll include it in the documentation. 
um, but it would import that, send it back to RedCap, and the default setting is it would ask you in the console, console, hey, these 45 records changed um, at these variables, would you like to upload? And you just click yes. So um, the even better version would be having a Shiny app uh, that I plan on having on top where you would just run all this stuff, stuff and maybe run something like run app and then you could modify the data um, within that app. So that's why I'm working on something that's um, um, like a, an extra add-on to so for people that don't want to touch R, as long as they can run 10 lines of code, they'd be able to do more than the red cap user interface can. Um, I think I only have a couple more minutes of any questions. Um, I'll close by saying, you know, as I've already said, this is a, a work in progress, but it is a functioning project. Um, if anyone wants to collaborate or give me input on um, how they think this could benefit the research, I'm going to do my homework on uh, the REDCap API projects that have been presented here. Um, and see if I can, I think uh, something I learned about was this, uh, the table aspect um, to the tidy, uh, red cap tidier. Um, so I was going to reach out to those people. But if you guys have any questions, send me an email. Um, that's B-R-O-S-E. I'll put it in the chat at Miami. Um, and you can follow the GitHub. And I also have um, my website, uh, the coding docs. If anyone wants to write an article or anything. It's more just my personal website. It's not anything special. And um, I'll put my email in the chat. Thanks for your time, guys. Thanks, Brandon. That was great.